What's going on everybody, LK here, back at it again with another video, and today some more Dragon Ball Fighters for y'all. So today we had the Master Roshi showcase in depth, so no short trailers, no people just mashing, it was very in depth, they went through the character in detail, all his moves, specials, assists, etc. So I took a lot of notes during this, and I just wanted to share my opinion on these things, show you the specific tools, and just tell you guys how I think of him as a character so far before he drops. If you like the content I'm putting out, consider liking this video or subscribing to the channel if you already have not. It does help the channel grow and I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. So first they're showcasing his jabs. He has a 2 low, a pretty big 5L, and a multi-hitting auto combo that you'll see in a little bit. Uh, this means immediately that he's really good against guard cancels. Next they show off his 2M. It's a little slow, but it's a slide, it's, which is kind of nice. It probably means it's good against Reflect. Uh, travels a lot so you can whiff punish. Uh, it's not a bad tool to have at all. So here's this 2H. Uh, a grounded 2H, which is definitely really nice. That means he gets ground cancel options, special cancel options there. And it moves backwards. Uh, some people think that's a bad thing, but probably it's fine. We have to see how it plays out in matches. So here they're doing the air normal. So the first one we're seeing is JL. So as you can see, it definitely looks huge. Definitely looks like a sword normal. Good for hitting super dashes. Uh, at this point, it's pretty common for them to give JLs like this to new characters. So his normal air normal, so like JL, JM, JH, they're pretty standard for characters. They describe the JH as being especially big. Uh, maybe it'll be as big as Gotenks. Gotenks in my head is a standard for this, like how big your jump heavy is. So the next interesting move here is his 6H. And once they showed this move, they started talking about a lot of unique moves that he has. So this move itself is not very fast, but they describe it as a move with no auto audio cues. So when he stands like that, he just does it. You have to react visually. Unfortunately, they did not have the um, invincibilities on when they were doing this, but most of the time when characters have moves where they disappear like that, they are invincible. So uh, like Hit, Trunks, UI Goku, like they all have moves like this and they're all invincible while they are off screen. Now the thing about his that they described is that once he disappears, which is near the end of the startup, the move is slow, right? It says 37 frames. Once he disappears, he reappears up extremely quickly, like in six frames. So uh, you can use this move off screen when they're falling on you uh, to kind of be tricky and do a cross up right away. So he also has a 3H as well. They described it as only being head involved. So it is similar to coolers, except it doesn't beat key blasts. Uh, again, Having these extra normals also makes his block strings longer than other characters, which might be an advantage down the line. So they were really weird about showing this. Uh, the animation looks kind of weird, but he has a jump 4M. So one thing about this game is that very, 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 very few air normals cross up, but he has a command one. This uh, they compared it to Iori from KOF, but this move reminds me of uh, Bang from Blaze Blue. Bang has this move, uh, basically the same input too, where uh, instead of having the air dash over, you could just jump over and it's always going to hit behind. You'll never have a problem with it whiffing or anything. Again, this is really, really rare in Dragon Ball for characters to have moves that hit behind like that. Uh, it's either like dive kick shockwaves or like Android 21 jump heavy. It's very, very, very rare. So here's this 5S. Uh, they described it like adult Gohans, but apparently it hits crouching. You can use it from about the same distance too. It jails into Kamehameha, which is kind of interesting. So uh, it definitely has unique block sun, aka more block sun. So you can do his 5S into vanish. You can do 5S into beam into vanish. Uh, it's good for screen control, of course, as well. So here is his 6S. So I was really interested in this move when I saw it because, of course, the angle is good and we've seen characters who move like this. Uh, Blue Vegeta has it. But as you just saw here, you can call it back once it goes off screen. Kind of like a Blaze Blue Lychee, uh, the old staff, how you'd go up and around. Uh, so it's really full control of one character. Uh, you could definitely fill up some unique angles in neutral control with that move. It looks very, very strong. The next move is his 2S, so it's a backflip. It looks like uh, Trunks' medium flip, that one flips backwards. Uh, the main thing about this is that it's invincible to Key Blast, which is really strong, and uh, he can cancel it into things on landing. So they described it as you could use it to kind of screw up people's super dashes, because the super dash will track, because you're moving backwards, the super dash will take longer, and he can land and cancel into an anti-air. It is also quite fast, it's like 12 frames. I don't, they didn't really say anything about how quickly he could act during it, or if he could act during it. Uh, but it could change his frame data on ground moves as well if you can, which is kind of interesting. 
Okay, the next move is his 214S, which they formally described as an unblockable, but really it's just a command grab, so you can uh, backdash it and it's okay. Uh, the angle is amazing. It is pretty reminiscent of 16's uh, 214H, the up grab, EX up grab. Uh, he has two angles on it as well, as you're going to see in a little bit. He has like the GT beam angle and he has like a vertical one. So if you're just like floating above him, he could just pull it off. At a glance, that move is extremely strong. Uh, anti airs, like true, true anti airs, he can't like block or anything are pretty rare so 16 of course has one but people don't play him that much air dragon rush is kind of slow broly has the anti-air grab but he he has to do it in the air uh this move is definitely going to be one of his standout moves and he gets really high return if this hits because if you spark the spark will whiff so you get a really high damage combo off it so next we have his beam he has a normal kamehameha it looks smaller than other characters it's a single hit it's a little reminiscent of like tien's really like dodon ray to me so here we have his command grab so it's at 28 frames so generally it's agreed that like the 24 frame ones are the main like good ones 28 i believe is around uh jiren speed but the animation is kind of tricky it looks a little bit similar to his auto combo he doesn't need anything to confirm into it either like if it hits you're just standing there so you can just do a combo to you so here we have his 236 it's like ui goku it goes through you um but he can always jail it so that means it's 15 frames so remember the rule in the game is that the medium and heavies have the same block stun it's 15 frames block stun so if you're special canceling into a move slower than 15 frames then there's going to be a gap so you can choose to go behind them this is good in a lot of ways not just as an approach but if let's say your backs to the wall but you get to like get out of pressure you can immediately switch sides and put them in the corner so here we're starting off as 214 so this move reminds me a lot of Azrael from blaze blue this character has a lot of blaze blue shit to be honest uh it's a guard point the normal versions are frame four the ex1 is frame one a frame one guard point reversal is really obnoxious they are extremely difficult to safe jump there are ways usually but you usually need like perfect 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 timing to do it the other important thing though is that it's not armor so like broly for example has the frame four armor so i'm really interested in seeing like interactions with different types of moves that hit multiple times like Bardox Mixer, Go Tanks EX Hand, stuff like that. So the next move they're showing off here is his 2-2 normal series. So it's a hop. The normal ones are frame four low crush and the EX one is frame one. Uh, this is gonna have some pretty specific usage. Uh, for instance, there are some characters who have standing jabs that are lows like Android 18 or Adult Gohan. Uh, in general, these things, low crushes are usually for fighting against Dragon Rush techs. Uh, as long as this is not considered an airborne move, uh, then it should be both teching with 2H and teching with 2L. And if they Dragon Rush, of course, you're off the ground as well. So if he gets a big return off this, then it will be a pretty good conditioning tool in case you're playing him with an assist that doesn't give him like really good high-low mix-ups or left-right mix-ups. So now we go into the super. So this is a level one that everyone got really excited about because it forces a snap. Uh, but... It is a snap. So even though you're spending one bar, uh, the opponent can come in with variable timing, but they are locked out of their assist, which is really nice. Uh, it does a good amount of damage. And apparently if you kill with the move, kind of like a uh, base Goku Kaioken, you can squeeze out a little bit extra damage. Again, most people were kind of hyped for this move because if it was an old snap, like forced timing, uh, this would be an extremely strong option, but uh, it's not that way. So we'll see how much usage it actually gets. His other level one is also very good. He has level one into level one, which is not a common tool. So this gives him uh, the opportunity to set up four level ones in a combo, uh, at least for a team, which is definitely a good thing and ups your damage. So here they're showing off his level three. First of all, this move looks pretty sick. Uh, second of all, it kind of lines up with uh, UI Goku's level 3 and SJ Goku's level 3. It is plus 42, so it's a lot, but mid screen is kind of hard to get there without using special movement techniques or spending meter on Vanish or something. In the corner, you get a safe jump, which is pretty nice, but for the most part, at least at a glance, uh, you could definitely do with some uh, experimentation. At least if you do level 3 mid screen, there's not that many. Uh, options now the thing about him actually is that he can't float so even though he has plus 42 you might be like oh he can just do a super jump float or fast fall mix up uh he can't do it so i don't really know what people are going to do with the frame advantage yet when you have them in the corner 
So next is a super dash. So a super dash on the ground and a super dash on the air is different. You can manually control the ground one. There are five different angles of approach. It's basically like a KOF jump. It's like a full screen hop. They are all invincible to key blast, totally invincible. So it does not graze like a super dash. So unlike when let's say you're playing SHJ Goku and SJ Goku fires a key blast, you super dash at him, he 2Hs you. Uh, if you fire a key blast at Master Roshi when he's jumping at you, you can't do anything really except for vanish. Uh, he can punish the vanish, you can punish him for him trying to punish you for doing a vanish. That was kind of hard to say. Uh, but there's kind of like a guessing game there going on. So here's his air super dash. It's a reverse Kamehameha. So you can use it for movement and it also has a projectile, right, as well. So you could do like jump four so backwards super dash and just have a beam out there it goes in a straight line you have to aim it uh you could aim it in six different directions now there are a few things about this so your normal tag right your normal tag you do a super dash but for him you do the air super dash right so you go in a straight line so that's kind of a weird thing his guard cancel also becomes the fastest in the game anywhere so if you don't know the mid screen guard cancel and the corner guard cancels are usually different in speed but roshi's is consistently the corner one so it travels at the same speed on top of that if you can aim that super dash and catch somebody you don't bounce off them so it's like he has like sparking all the time normally sparking uh, is the only time your super dashes don't bounce off people, but since his doesn't track they gave you a little bonus there So you get opportunities to do mix-ups from neutral quite a bit if you can aim it well And you have the right assist to go with it. Let's talk about his assist. So his a assist is Kamehameha It's a standard one. Uh, it's pretty small and it wall bounces So it freezes them for a little bit and then it will wall bounce so for me, it is pretty reminiscent of Tien's Dodon Ray here too. The block sound is pretty high as well. It's plus 32. Uh, most beams, again, are usually plus 30. So this is kind of a nice thing. So all in all, defensive calls will be extra strong with him because it's easier to hit confirm it compared to other beams. Remember, most beams send you just flying in general. His is going to make you wall bounce. So it should be pretty easy to convert from defensive situations with all characters. So the assist they hyped up and the one they're probably going to meme pretty hard is his B assist. So he has a block stun assist on his B assist. It's 46 frames and it's the 214. So it's the guard point. Uh, it's a two hit plus 46 assist with a guard point on it from frame 15. So this means that while you can't see him potentially, he has a guard point available and it's really, really easy to convert off of. Uh, then of course if you block it then the opponent gets offense. They didn't really describe tracking or anything with it outright. They were just calling it Bardock B, Bardock B, Bardock B over and over. Uh, but apparently and probably if you're watching this you are probably going to pick this uh, because people are really starving for mix-ups in this game. So uh, it seems to be what might be the go-to option for him. So unfortunately they didn't really show how far it travels it per se because that's a really important thing about these types of assists uh they're just memeing about bardock b the whole time but either way it having a guard point means it's an amazing mid-range tool uh you could just kind of get in maybe with call him to protect your whiff and then if the opponent tries to punish you you'll get a guard uh a guard point to protect you it in that way is kind of similar to the way people use ui goku's a assist and then last we have his C assist. I found it quite odd that they gave him two blocks and assists. Uh, he has B and C. His C one is plus 50, it's auto combo. Uh, I'm assuming he's gonna track as well. Uh, I did find it kind of a strange choice, but he has a lot of moves. So I think it's kind of hard for them to pick like what to give him. So just some closing thoughts on him. He looks really interesting. He has a lot of tools. Uh, I am seeing this pattern. I talked about it when I talked about uh, Super Broly the other day. Uh, a really recurring pattern that I like of giving characters just a lot of tools in general so that they're generally strong. They have weaknesses, but like at least you feel like you can always do stuff in situations instead of thinking like, oh, I just can't do anything at all if I'm here, but I'm the best here. His skill ceiling looks pretty high as well. No super dash means you have to like aim his movement a lot. They were talking about how grounded. Uh, you have to play him and play against him because he has so many good anti-air tools that do a lot of damage. The way he moves around the screen is kind of hard to keep up with, etc. Not totally sure where he's going to be on a team. Like he has good offense, but they described him as being a little bit meter hungry per se. So usually these characters you'd play uh, second. He does have a good spread of assists. He's got a beam and an easy to convert beam, even though they said like this is probably not going to be the one people pick. 
Uh, I kind of feel that because people are just hungry for Box Sun, but his beam assist is definitely a good option, I think. On top of that, he has a lot of tools and he has a lot of normals, uh, and I think it's going to be kind of tricky to get out of offensive situations against him. All in all, he looks like a pretty interesting character that will reward you for learning all this stuff. He looks pretty cool. As far as me, I'm going to try him when he comes out because I try all the DLC, but where we are in Season 3, I don't think I want to try such a technical character, especially since I picked up a technical character, Gotenks, pretty recently. So uh, we will see about how long I play him personally, but once people start mastering him, I think it's going to add a lot to the game. And I do kind of like all the season three characters being like really unique compared to the prior seasons. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.